God's doing something wonderful, something new. And you know, sometimes when something's about to happen, there's usually an in-gathering. An in-gathering of eagles, a, a gathering together. Uh, you know, I, I believe that the, that, that the bride is actually coming out of the body. That there's a remnant that God is reaching out for right now, that He is drawing from different places, different backgrounds, because he is ready to do something, and something very, very special. As he does that, he begins to reach out and call and look for hungry hearts. You know, sometimes we, in our need, you know, we really hammer heaven, and I want you to know that God loves us, and our need is important to us, but, but I want you to know that our faith moves God. Not our need, our faith moves God. And what we need to do is to touch God with our faith and with hunger. It's the hunger of man and the faith of man that actually moved the heart of God. The same way it was with Zacchaeus, the same way it is now. And I want to tell you what, there is a nucleus of hungry hearts that are in this province. And those hungry hearts are calling and crying out right now. And that hunger is going to begin to gather. And the Lord, by the power of His Spirit in the midst of that hunger, is going to begin to gather people in. Get ready for a season of very unusual bedfellows. Unusual but people coming together that you would say, man, how in the world could they ever come together? There's just no way. You know, uh, we were up in Ottawa recently and uh, they had a pastor's meeting and, and on a Saturday morning and uh, uh, Friday morning. And uh, I remember they had over a hundred pastors that came to the meeting. And I want you to know that's a miracle. You know, you gather a hundred pastors together, that's, that, that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, in the natural, you know, that even if you give them a free breakfast, somebody say amen. <laughs> but God was reaching out to these pastors and bringing down the barriers, drawing them together. And that's what he's doing right now. He's drawing the hearts of, uh, the hungry hearts of people together. He's drawing us together with a purpose and a reason. Some of you have been longing in your spirit for what God's doing. You know, I, I've been involved in revival for a long, long time. I was birthed and rebirthed in the fire of revival. I spent three and a half years in Pensacola, Florida. I mentioned that this morning. Right in the heat of revival, five and a half million people came there, went back to that city and went for a six month revival there across town, where the, again, the city was impacted tremendously. So I, I spent a lot of time right in the fire of revival. And, and revival is a wonderful thing. But it's actually a stepping stone for God. The purpose of revival is actually to bring transformation. It's to bring change. It's to change your society. It's like, you know, sometimes we get refreshing. Sometimes we, we get revival. But it's all with a purpose. And that purpose is to transform the world around us. We're revived. We're, 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 we're revived actually to bring something very special to the world around us, to have an impact on our families and our homes and our cities. And this impact is on the way. It's already begun. It's, it's going on behind the scenes. Many of you have been in this province and even in the city for a long time, and some of you have been indoctrinated with, this is a hard place. And I want you to know this is a good time to, to dispel that thought completely from your mind. Amen. I'll tell you what, there is nothing that's too hard for God. Amen. You know what, if God could do that for that brother, if God could save me from drugs and alcohol, a, a hard case, if God can touch me. If God can touch you, God can do it. There's nothing too hard for God. If God can do something from attitude, there's a nucleus that he has to work with. And he understands how, you know, sometimes it's a dry place. And, and, and sometimes we get all captivated in the dryness. But I'm going to tell you what, you give me some dry wood, I'm going to show you how to start a quick fire. <laughs> that dry wood catch fire in a hurry. And there are some people that are very hungry right now. That hunger does something very, very special. So don't dispel what's happening, but don't listen to that naysaying voice about it's too hard. Because it's not. We are positioned right now for great change and you know the wind has been blowing some of us we've seen that wind blowing and wind blowing and it's almost like the wind's been blowing in our face but i want to tell you what there's a fresh new wind coming right now that's at our back there's been a shift and there's been a change in the heavens and that shift has affected the earth and something now is happening right now in the midst of all this shaking that a fresh wind is at our back 
And I'm going to tell you, this is the time now to knock on doors that you knocked on a long time ago. Hmm. And you didn't get the right response. Mm -hmm. To speak to someone who maybe the last time ignored you. I want to tell you about there's a perfect timing. There's an appointed time uh, for, for all things. There's a right timing. Mm -hmm. right? And right now is the right time. The hearts of men right now are beginning to open up in this province. So get ready. This is the time to do something. Mm -hmm. This is the time to step up to the plate and see what God's going to do for you. When God does it corporately, if I'm in the right place and I'm in the right alignment, then I'm going to come right into that place of blessing. So uh, one of the reasons why I was sharing this is so that you would know prophetically what's happening, so that you come into the right alignment, so that you guard your heart. The way you guard your heart is by guarding your ears. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you're with and where you're at. Because you're right in the perfect place for you. Be careful that you don't listen to some of the naysayers that talk about you don't need to have a pastor or you, you don't need to have a local church. I'm telling you about God's heart is for local church. He is never going to abandon local church. And everybody needs a pastor. I need a pastor. You need a pastor. The prophet needs a pastor. The pastor needs a pastor. We need to have people in right alignment anointed to speak into our lives. We need to be in the place that God has for us. He doesn't want us to be independent. And he doesn't want us to be codependent. But he wants us to be interconnected and interrelated in the right place in the heart of God. Rightly connected in God. God has a place for you, a nesting place, a resting place, an appointed place. And you need to be in your place. Sometimes it's so easy to be drawn from one place to another and bounce around to different things. But I'll tell you what, there's a right place and the right timing in the heart of God. And right now, as all of this shaking and shifting is going on around the world, I want you to know that the purpose of that is a realignment and a redefinement of what church really is. He has turned the church upside down so it will be right side up. So that his people will be on the top. So that his true leaders will know where they stand and they'll equip and they'll empower and they'll launch and they'll serve. That they'll begin to understand the right alignment to what God is doing. There's a, a fresh realignment that's coming with the apostolic and the five-fold ministry restoration that's going on that began many years ago. And this is all part of the realignment. This is part of holding the harvest. This apostolic reformation that we're in the midst of right now. And there's a lot of us that are having a little trouble just grabbing a hold of that. We don't even understand what the apostolic can really do. But I'll tell you what, it's important for this time. It's important for the time of the harvest. It gathers in the harvest. It helps us to hold the harvest. It's the, it's the birthing and the building anointing. And the anointing for signs and wonders. The anointing for kingdom vision. And that's what he is restoring, restoring right now. The heart of the Father coming back in. The hearts of the fathers being turned to the sons and the sons of the fathers, according to Malachi chapter 4. This is all prophetic about the season we're in. And this restoration process is preparing us for the great end time move of the Spirit. Amen. You don't have to be a prophet and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see mm -hmm. that right now, right before our eyes, we are seeing end time prophecy fulfilled continually every day. All you need to do is to put on the TV, open up a newspaper, and the end time prophecies are being fulfilled. Secular TV programs and newscasters are saying, what is causing this? What's going on with that? And you see scripture read right on television on secular TV. They can't help themselves right now because the word of the Lord is going to go out. Amen. Something is happening. There's a shift in that's coming. We're right on the threshold of the greatest harvest ever known to man. We're also on the threshold of the greatest battle ever known to man. There's a battle that's raging right now. Not just all over the earth, but in the hearts of every man and every woman. Whether they're Christian or non-Christian, there's a battle that's raging inside us. There's a battle of good and evil. Paul said that the more I tried to do good, the worse I got. You know, and he was working out his salvation with fear and trembling, and so do we need that. See, because something right now is roaring up. It's a preparation for this end time battle that, that, that's already begun. We're right there on the threshold of seeing the greatest harvest and the greatest battle ever known to man. Sometimes we complain about things like immigration. Oh, that doesn't happen here. That, that's only, that must be only in Ontario. Or maybe from Philly. You know, I'm from Philly. They're probably only complaining in Philly about immigration. You know, well, maybe it happens here a little bit. But you know what you need to do is to seek God's kingdom purpose in this. See, you know, God said, go ye into all the world. 
You know, he said, go ye. But you know what? Some of us couldn't seem to get it together to go ye. <laughs> and in his divine wisdom, and because of the covenant that he made, according to his word, the harvest is coming. We couldn't go ye. So he has sent the 1040 window right here to Canada. He sent the 1040 window right here. Some people couldn't go ye to India because they just couldn't get it together. They couldn't go to Africa. They couldn't go into that 1040 window, but he sent it right here. Well, so now, you know, people you couldn't preach the gospel to in the Middle East. In the 1040 window, you couldn't hand them a Bible. Now they're sitting next to you at work. He's looking right now at the 9 to 5 window. Hello? Instead of the 1040. He put it right there. Now, you can preach the gospel. You can hand them a Bible. You can preach Jesus to them. Somebody say amen. 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 I'm telling you, he's bringing the harvest to us. This is all a setup. All the shaking that's going on. I want, I want you to know, don't be in fear. The world right now is in fear. They're, they're, doing, they're making choices and decisions every day by fear. Amen. I say to you, don't be in fear. Be in faith. Amen. Amen. His word is for us, not against us. And all the midst of all this shaking, that is of the kingdom shall remain. Are you of the kingdom? Yes. You're going to remain. Amen. And he's going to shake a lot of things out of our life and stir us up. He's shaking in the hearts of every one of us right now who are really seeking him. Because he is trying to shed us of all that natural fleshly things that are going on around us to prepare us for that next season. You know, there needs to come a weeding and a pruning in every garden. And you know, we don't like that pruning, especially when he cuts it back a little bit deep. But you know what? It brings forth the fruit. And what we need to do that, to be a healthy tree, we have to let him do the pruning that's necessary. I just want to give you a little something prophetic before I got started. That's not my message. That was just saying, hi, how are you? <laughs> we, we, we're, going to get, we're going to get some things to happen here in the Spirit. We're going to see the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God in operation. Wherever I go, I see that. And I know that I'm not only, I mean, when Pastor, Pastor Tony was talking about that God is real. Uh, God is not God of wood, not made of wood, not made of metal, plastic Paris. He's in the hearts of every man and every woman who know Him as Lord and Savior. He's a real God, a living God, a giving God, a forgiving God. There's none like Him. He's doing something wonderful in our hearts right now. You know, sometimes we get confused and we think that, you know, if we're building the kingdom, if we build a church building or we build a ministry. Hello? And Jesus said the kingdom was within. And you know what? When I'm, if I build into a man or a woman, and I build into this woman, I build, or, or build into a man, then I'm building into the kingdom, because the kingdom is within. We need to build into one another, and start to think a little less of building buildings, and start to build into the hearts and the lives of our brothers and sisters, because yeah. that's the kingdom building process that's really important in the heart of God. That's how the hearts of the fathers are going to return to the son, and the hearts of the sons back to their fathers and mothers. You know, we've gone through a great season that has been very negative in the natural, in a fatherless generation. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> as surely as it happened in the natural, it's happening in the spirit. But he's getting ready right now prophetically to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And we're going to see a rebirthing right now of mentoring and discipleship okay. in the body of Christ. That the spiritual sons and daughters are going to be raised up. That the hearts of the spiritual fathers and mothers are going to be there to nurture, to raise up, to empower, to equip, to enable, to launch. It's the season that we're in. See, because everybody, anybody that says yes to Jesus Christ, from the moment you say yes to Jesus Christ, there's a ministry that was birthed in you. You know, there's a restoration that's going on of everything. And this restoration is the restoration of the whole church. The restoration of us individually, because we are the church. This restoration is very important. One of the things that we needs to be restored, certainly the gifts of the Spirit, the power of God, the glory of God restored back into the church. Hello? I mean, we need to have the power of God again. And we need to have the gifts of the Spirit in operation. Somebody say amen. We need the supernatural power of God, because that's what's really going to make a difference. This move of the Spirit is going to be a move of the supernatural. We're going to have to have a new realignment. We're going to have to have the hearts of the fathers going to the sons, the sons back into the spiritual alignment. It's going to have to come rightly and wholly back into the body. All of these things 
are going to have to be restored. But the most important thing that's going to have to be restored is going to be the priesthood of the believer. To get to the place where we understand that we are all priests and kings under Christ, yes. under God. Huh? Yes. That we're all priests and we're all kings. He said that we're a, a holy nation and a royal, a royal priesthood and a holy nation. That every one of us are priests. And that there are some that are called as fivefold leaders. According to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. But their, their purpose is in verse 12 to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body. See, we've been leaning on so hard on the pastors and on the leaders, thinking that they're supposed to be the ones doing the work of ministry when we're all supposed to be doing the work of ministry. Hello? Until we can get that concept in our own mind, until we can be equipped and empowered, until we can begin to sow ourselves, everything that we are. You know, when that bucket comes around, you know, uh, surely your, your finances, your resources, and all that are very important to extend and advance the kingdom. But I'll tell you, when the bucket comes around, he's looking for you to jump in. Hello? He wants you to jump in the bucket. He's looking for a living sacrifice. That's what the altar is for. It's for a living sacrifice. In other words, he's looking for me and you. Yeah, I don't know a lot about what he's going to do. I wish he could tell you more about what he was going to do and what he's going to do in your right person or whatever, but I can tell you this. He's fixing to kill you. I said to you, he's fixing to kill you. God wants to kill you. That's his deal. See, because in order for me to come alive, first and foremost, I have to die. See, if there ain't no dying, there ain't no resurrection. You want resurrection power, you got to go to the cross. You want to go to the upper room for power, you got to go by Calvary. Sooner or later, somebody got to die in order for Christ to come alive. We're trying to do it the easy way, the newfangled way. You know, the, David had the same problem. He was, you know, he had a good idea, a good moment. He wanted to bring the ark back into the city. You know, he wanted to bring the glory of God back into his city, back into his home. Some of you sitting here tonight have the same motive that David had. That's a good heart and a good motive. But David said, hey, let's build us a brand new fancy car. We won't give God a fancy car, man. We will probably go give him some shiny hubcaps and stuff like that, eh? And then they started to bring him in on this fancy new car. And then, of course, Yusuf reaches over and try to help God. I said to you, when the power of God, the presence of God is around, don't put your hand on it. Because no flesh going to glory in the presence of God. God don't need your help that way. Hello? He reached out and touched that. Bang! He was gone. Now David, man, David's a mess. Hey, I'm just going to paraphrase through this Philly, if that's all right. I'm going to give you the gospel, you know, according to Philadelphia. You know? hey, but here he comes, moving in with the heart rate and used to get some zap. Now David gets himself all upset, man, out of shame. He said, man, now, man, he's right here. He got mad at God. Of course, none of us ever got mad at God. <laughs> well, you know, we were never pressing into something good. And when it didn't turn out right, we got a little bit angry at God. You know, I, I like good things, but I'm not looking for a good thing. I'm looking for a God thing. The problem with good is God wants too many O's. I want to do what God's doing. And I want to do it God's way. Because God has a way. Hello? God has a way. When He's building something, he builds by divine design. He didn't just tell Noah, go build me a big boat. He told him just how to have it. Hello? And when he told him to build a, a tabernacle in the wilderness, he told him how long, how wide, what material to use. He told us how to build a New Testament church. But man came up with another way. Before you know it, we began to build a monument made of man. Hello? A monument that salutes me ain't a whole lot different than what happened here with David. They got a new way. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be seeker friendly. I want to be spirit friendly. Amen. Hello? I don't want to be a man pleaser. I want to be a God pleaser. Yes. Now I want to do what the Spirit of God is saying. I want to be spirit led, spirit driven. I want to be a man of the Spirit. Amen. You know, because I'm going to be able to cry out to God and see the power and the presence of God come. We're trying to get Him to bless our mess. And a whole lot different than what happened to David. Now David and Mr. Dad, he gets so good. We said, send that card up there to old Obi Eden's house. You know, Obi, send it up there to him. You know, Obi was like an outcast, Dad. And that's you know, the outcast dead. David goes home. Before you know it, he hears a little rumor going on. 
Hey, you hear what's going on up at Obi's house? Oh, Obi, man, he's getting his socks blessed off, dude. Obi is getting blessed. His family's getting blessed. His sheep, his herds are getting blessed. I mean, everything's happening good in Obi's house. He closed that ark step. The glory of God's there. David said, David goes into his room, says to himself, mm -hmm. he said, you know what? I think we need to get that ark here no matter what. You know, let's see, what way did God say to bring it here? I'm going to tell you what, when you bring the glory of God, when you want to bring the glory of God into Quebec, you want to bring the glory of God into Montreal, you want to bring the glory of God into your church and into your home, there's only one way. That's on the shoulders of the priest. He ain't looking for no fancy carts, we people. You carry me. I don't care about the road going in. If you're looking for revival, you're looking for the glory of God, you're looking for the presence of God. It wasn't a long walk, but every six steps, bang, man, they made a sacrifice. There was bloodshed. And I'm going to tell you what, when revival comes to your city, when you review part of that move that brings revival in, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to have to make sacrifices. It's work. Hello? And somebody tell you what, somebody's going to make some sacrifices, and somebody's going to shed some blood. Somebody's going to receive some persecution. Somebody's going to be isolated from everything and everyone around you. Because the enemy is not going to give up this ground that he's been holding a long time without a fight. It's going, to, it's going to require intercession and prayer, soaked in tears, the ground. It's going to require priests, men and women of God who know they're called of God to carry in the presence of God in prayer and intercession and worship. To carry in his glory. See, we're looking for a new way and an easy way. We're looking for the fast track. I'm going to tell you about there's only one way, and that's his way. Amen. The one that sang that song, my way knows there's another way now. And that he didn't have a hold of the right way. It's time now to do it God's way. Now, tell me, you're looking for a revival? Man, I know what I got a really nice message up here. But you know, how about if I just share my heart? That'd be all right with you? Amen. Yeah. I've been around revival. I'm hungry for revival. I'm moving the spirit. That's really what's on my heart right now. Something dramatic is going to happen. But it's going to require you and I to change our mindset. And change the way we talk, the way we speak, the things we do. I think this revival that's coming is going to be a revival of holiness. Yes. You know, it's going to bring restoration to the prophetic movement. To the office of the prophet, the gift of prophecy. It's going to be restored back into the body. You know, Ruth Heflin and I worked with her the last year of her life. I was there with her. She was the ordained me. And, in 1999. And she was probably one of the most powerful prophets to the nations of the world. She said the voice of revival is prophecy. Declaration and proclamation declaring the way of the Lord. Speaking things into being. Do you declare your morning? Do you know the power that's on your tongue? Do you know the power of prophetic proclamation and declaration? Of what you speak, the same tongue that blesses is the same tongue that curses. Mm -hmm. We need to go to call blessing on ourselves or curses on ourselves. Yes. We better watch the way we pray and what we're praying for. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to call it into being because God gave us all power and all authority. This is the time right now. You know, before you build the house, count the cost. Because there's a cost. If you're looking for revival, there's a price to pay. I said something this morning. You know, people cry out for revival, but they know what they're praying for. And then when revival hits, half the people hit the floor, the other half hit the door. Because they wanted God to come, but God to come their way. God to do what they wanted. They were looking for the way God moved five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. I love the, the wonderful stories of Azusa Street. I, I love uh, what happened in Pensacola, Florida. What happened in Toronto Airport. What happened in, in, in Asheville, Virginia. I love the stories of how God moved. But man, I'm looking for what God's doing now. Yes. I'm looking for what God's I'm looking for the new move. Yes. I'm waiting for the new wave. Yes. God's going to do a new thing. Yes. And He don't got to do it my way. You know, God ain't all about religion. He's about relationship. Yes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but He's bringing a new thing in. And I have to be ready to change. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to yield. To what he's doing in this hour and season. I have to be ready to change my schedule and my agenda. Yes. I have to change the priority orders in my life if I'm really looking for God. Yes. Come on now. Most of us aren't really looking for God. Yes. And we can pray hard as you want in intercession. But most of us aren't really willing to pay the prices necessary to touch the heart of God. 
You know, you, you'll know when you're ready to touch the heart of God, when you're ready to really change around your priority order of things. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to require sacrifice if you're going to be part of that group that carries in the glory of God. Because there's souls involved. And this ain't just all about having fun. It ain't about people falling down and getting it up. It ain't about getting goosebumps. This is about life-changing experiences before the living God. Hello? There's sometimes I see people come to church and say, especially if God said, man, you know, uh, man, God starts moving, doing a whole lot of wonderful things. People get healed, great testimony comes, you know, miracles start to happen around us. Hey, Amen. The dude don't even want to move. He said, well, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're pretty reserved up here. You know, we're, we're concerned up here. Yeah, you weren't that conservative when that dude hit that hat trick the other night. You know, I saw a picture of you at the ball game. You were acting like a maniac. <laughs> God does a life changing experience and all of a sudden you're sitting there saying nothing. I'll tell you what, it needs your tongue, your mouth. You know what, if I witness a miracle, I'm responsible for that miracle. The same as if it happened to me. The same way as the woman at the well. He's birthing right now. You know in that prophetic word that I said he's sending, the, the, he, he's sending forth right now the, uh, uh, the, the hunters and the fishers. The evangelists and the people that are hungry for souls. You know what? For the rest of you to understand, I'm deeper than that, man. You know, I'm, 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 getting, I'm moving in. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving into to the revelatory realm. I'm moving into the glory realm. You know? I said to you, whatever you do, don't leave your faith behind. <laughs> Hello? Without faith, you can't please God. As I move from faith to faith and glory to glory, I don't want to leave something behind. God's wanting to add it on. That's right. So as I'm moving forward, I want to make sure that I'm finally feeling the heart of God. There's nothing deeper in heart's God, in God's heart, than souls. Yes. You want to get deep in God? It's about souls. Amen. I don't talk about souls. Sometimes we say souls, and it almost looks like a thing, a patch we can put up on the wall about how many people came to church. Hello? Then what's it about? Souls is about your sister, your cousin, your aunt, your brother. There's somebody's brother. There's somebody's life. Yeah. And he's interested in their life. He's interested in changing and transforming their life. If you're going to be a part of that, you may get yourself ready. It's going to be, I'm telling you about this next move of the Spirit. It's going to be a move of holiness. Holiness is not a dirty word. Legalism is a dirty word. Legalism begins when I begin to do today. What I did yesterday, because it worked yesterday, then I begin the methodology of religion that ultimately will carry me into legalism if I'm not careful. It's not about how you dress, about how you look, about how long your hair is. Holiness is a thing of the heart. It's all about your heart. Sometimes we say, God, send me into young kids. Send me into the prostitutes, the drug addicts, send me into here. He said, man, I love them too much to send them into church. <laughs> no, but they come in here and the next thing you know, we're trying to convert them into Pentecostals. Yeah. Charismatics. Charismaniacs. If we're careful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? They're going to have to dress just like me. They're going to want to clone them, you know? Yeah. You know, we don't have to worry about a hairdo at this point in my life. <laughs> they don't make no hair jokes now. That's no fun of hair jokes. No fun, no joke, man. No hair jokes. No, it ain't about the color of the hair, about the hair rings. It's about their heart. It ain't about me making them just like me. He can about cloning them. If I want them to come in, I gotta let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got to let him change their hearts. Right. Hello? I had to tell them how long to have their skirt, what color hair to wear, what color pocketbook to bring, how to talk, how to communicate, how to relate. If I want to bring them in and I'm looking for their input, I gotta let them come in with all of their creativity. Right. And guess what? When they first come in, they're coming in with their mess. Mm. The same way I came in with mine. That's all right. And he's still cleaning up mine 35 years later. That's all right. Hello? I am a work in progress. That's all right. And I hope that he never stops working on me the day he calls me to global. Right. Somebody say it again. Somebody gets up here in front of you and starts to make it look like they got it all together. That they got, they got a lock on this thing, that everything is right and perfect. That's a good time to run, man. Because every one of us are going through trial and tribulation. Every one of us are working our situations out. I don't care who they are. 
It's time for the award-winning Christians and ministers to step away from the platform. Because it's time to get real. Yes. You know, we all got problems and family situations and circumstances. Yes. Yes. We all got things that, that, that the enemy is attacking right now. Yes. That he's trying to rob us of our faith. And what we need to do is to be real and to be open. And to be vulnerable before God. It's a time for reality. This move of the Spirit is going to be a move of reality. I'm going to tell you what, there's a generation that's waiting for the real thing. Yeah. Hello, there's a generation that is no longer going to be fooled by hypocrisy. Yes, yes, yes. Hello? They ain't going to be fooled when somebody says, God's in the house. Because sometimes you say, God's in this place. All religions, God's in this place. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, for a while, believe that. You know, God's a, a spirit. It's like, it's like wind. You can't see the wind. But you know what? If the wind blows through this city, if a storm blows through the city, the great wind blows through the city, you don't see the wind, but you see what the wind did. And if God's in this house, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see lives changed and transformed by the glory and the power of God. You're going to see people healed, saved, delivered, and set free by His power, by His love. You're going to see transformation begin to come, one heart, one life at a time. You're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles, because that's what the Spirit of God does when the Spirit of God's in the house. Don't be fooled by what some man says. Amen. But no, by the power of the Spirit, discerning the Spirit, is God really in the house? Let's begin to press in for the reality of God. The church needs a reality check. I'm the church. You're the church. Sometimes we're running away from church. You know, you know what, sometimes we're looking for that like pat me on the back kind of message. If that was you were looking for, you're in the wrong place. I'm going to tell you what, that is not the message you're going to get when true revival comes. Right. Revival, real revival comes in a place of repentance. You can have refreshing and you can have renewal without repentance. But revival comes with repentance. If there's a shallow repentance, there'll be a shallow revival. If there's a deep repentance, there'll be a deep revival. If there's no repentance, there'll be no revival. It's about turning our hearts back toward God, about softening our hearts. See, I'm telling you what, there's a prophetic generation that's walking around patting everybody on the back. Tell the church, the church is good, the church is wonderful. I'm going to tell you what, if I can up here and tell you that the church, meaning the church in general around the world, across Canada, is wonderful, you'll know I'm not a prophet, I'd be a liar. The church needs work. Yes. But we're part of the church. The church is not perfect. God's working on the church. He loves the church. He's married to the backslider. That's right. How many of you in the honest condition of the church today? The church is sitting in church on Sunday morning. Most of them are backslidden. Long, they lost their first love a long time ago. They're just going through the motions. I know you can hear it from the heart of, a, of one who backslidden. You know, you look around church and start comparing yourself to everybody else, but you found that you lost your first love. It's time again to turn to God. I mean really turn to God. Turn to God with all you are, with all you have, with all you hope to be. Humble yourself before God and He'll lift your head up. Hello? Yeah. Hey, repentance is about humility. Repentance is going to draw God's attention. That humble heart He'll never despise. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Are we ready to go there as a church, as a people? Am I ready to go there personally, individually? Count the cost before you build a house. You'll get halfway in and say, well, I'm not so sure. See, because God's going to begin to gather the sticks together. Right now, man, my intercessors are getting dreams like you can believe everywhere around. They're getting them in Ottawa. They're getting them in Hamilton and Toronto. They're getting them here in Montreal about what God wants to do here. I'm looking now for a strategy. More than just a revelation. I'm looking for a mission and strategy because God has a strategy for this region. A divine strategy. See, I live my life by dreams and visions. You know what? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, he said that, I now believe this is a now word for the church, that, that right now, it says that all of creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. All of creation, everything that God created anywhere and everywhere, all of creation is crying out now, waiting for the manifestation. If you look at that word for the maturity, of the sons of God to reveal themselves in all their maturity. That's what creation is waiting for right now. And if you go just a few verses in front of that, he says that the sons of God 
are those that are led by the Spirit of God. Not those that are led by the flesh, but those that are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. It's time to be led by the Spirit of God. Not by the Spirit of man. Not by what feels good and what looks good. I want to be led by the Spirit. It's time now because all of creation is waiting. This thing is starting to roar up right now. Something's happening. Something's stirring. A lot of people that are sitting in church, man, they're going to miss the whole deal. You know, sometimes we look at the scripture and we see that scripture where it talks about, uh, you know, they're going to miss their day of visitation. Oh, of course, that was for the Israelites. You know, like Deuteronomy 28. You know, all the blessings go on my refrigerator there for me and my family. But all the curses, they belong to the old Israelites. Hello? I don't think so. I, I got to really take the whole word and understand what it's really about. And press into the fullness of what God wants to do right now. I'm looking for reality in my own life. I want to know for sure I'm ready to pay the price. Because there's a hunger in my heart. When I came to Canada almost 12 years ago, I came here with a hungry man. And God's moved in great power on that hunger that he birthed in my heart. But the man standing before you today, I'm more hungry than I've ever been in my life for a move of God. I'm hungry right now. I'm willing to pay whatever the price. I'm going to leave nothing down. I'm going to leave nothing behind. I want to take one good run around the block. I don't care how many years that takes. But I want to leave nothing on the table. I don't want to drop. I don't want to see to fall to the ground. I want the fullness of the harvest to come forth. I want to see God made real, made manifest for his people. I want to see God sweep this nation. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Pay whatever the price is. Anybody there yet? Is that hunger starting to birth in your heart? You're going to know when revival starts to hit. Some of you are going to walk home tonight and there's going to be such a hunger in your heart. You're going to go to prayer and all of a sudden your prayer closet is going to start to light up like the 4th of July. <coughs> First time that I walked into revival and got touched, I felt nothing. I didn't fall down. I didn't see nothing. I didn't shake. Nothing happened in the natural. But my heart began to get hungry for the presence and the glory of God. The Word of God started to come alive in my heart. See, it was reviving me from the inside out. There's a process that has to happen, and God works from the inside out. This is an upside-down kingdom, and God works from the inside out. We need to live life as Christians from the inside out, and that's what He's going to do. Some of you are going to go home, and all of a sudden you're going to begin to get dreams and visions. All of a sudden, there's going to be such a hunger in your heart. All of a sudden, you're going to wake up in the morning wanting to know what God wants. It's going to be the first voice that you want to, uh, 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 to share in the morning. is that voice that goes up to Him. And then the last one you want to speak to at night is Him. There's going to be a fresh hunger. Some of us, we've just been going through the motions. Just going through the motions. Nothing, nothing more than religion. It's easy to get caught up there. And we can change that anytime we want. God's a God of U-turns. He's got a miracle, signs of wonder. He's got a mercy and grace. But I've got to turn to Him first. I've got to make that first move. The Bible says if I take a step toward Him, He'll take a step toward me. I love this deal. I, you know, because I'm taking this little one man step. And then God is taking one of them big old God step. Amen? But I've got to take the first step. Yeah, sometimes people, I've talked to them, they say, I'm waiting on God. You know, I don't want to hurt your feelings, honey. But God's waiting on you. Amen. Hello? Amen. God's waiting on you. Give him something to bless. You know? Give him something to bless. You know, I, I, I love intercession, and that's my primary gifting. There comes a time as an intercessor, as a warrior of God. There comes a time to get up off the floor and go to war. It's time to get real. If you really want to see something happen. Prophetically, what's coming out right now? What's going to come out in this move of the Spirit? What's coming out the other end? Because God always does something with a purpose. I'll tell you what's coming out. One new man. I said one new man. That's God's heart for the church. Not all this nonsense that we got going on. Hello? He's going to change this. It's got to change because it's not his heart for New Testament reality. Just like he says in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 2. He said it was Jew. Some were far away. Some were near at hand. He said they're not Jew nor Greek. Not bond nor free. But one new man. 
I said, yeah, not black, not white, not red, not yellow, but one new man. Amen. Not from the Italian band, from the Irish band, from the English band, from the, from the French band, but from one new man. Amen. Prejudice has to stop at the root because prejudice is not from God and it's rooted in the same spirit that has attacked the children of Israel forever. Yes. It has to stop. The prejudice against young and old, rich and poor, it's got to stop. It's about one new man. It's about coming together in unity. If you want to command the blessing of God, you'll never open up your mouth again with a prejudice remark about the French, about the English, about the black, about the white, about the red, about the yellow. It's one new man in Christ. That's his work. And that's what's coming out the other side of this thing. He's going to clean up this mess. I don't need, I don't care what, he don't need me. I need him. I need to yield. The river of God's coming. If I stand there like a rock, he'll just go around me. I got to yield my heart and submit myself to his spirit. I tell you why we got to let that river flow. Something wonderful is going to happen. But it's time for you and I to begin to yield to the river. To begin to move in the spirit. To begin to believe him now. It's time to soar. I tell you what, there's a cry in the heart of God right now. There's a stirring in the nest. And it's trying to call us to a place where we begin to truly soar at the people we are. And it's time for our hearts to begin to be open again to the truth and to the reality of his Christ and his word. It's time to turn again to God. The prophet of this hour will say the same thing that the prophet of old said. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. That is the cry of the prophet. It's not about redheads, waterbeds, about limousines, about Lear jets. Hello? It's not about having piles of money. It's about picking up your cross and following him. It's about walking with him in a place of sacrifice and obedience of love. It's the power of the cross made real in our lives. To the Jew, it's a stumbling block. To the Greek, the cross is nonsense. But to you and I, it's the only power to salvation. Amen. There's no other way but the cross. There's no other name to call on but the name of Jesus Christ. There's no new way. There's no multiple covenants, no dual covenants. That's false reality. That's false doctrine. That's right. Everybody needs Jesus Christ. Yes. Everybody. Yeah. That's the only way to the Father is through the Son. It's time for the truth. And it's only the truth that's going to set us free. That, you know what, all that prophetic nonsense and all that goofiness that we do in church is going to keep us running around the mountain of religion, trying to build buildings and trying to build churches instead of trying to build a kingdom. You know what, Jesus rarely talked about church. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. And he said, repent you, the same as John the Baptist, for the kingdom of God is near at hand. He went around their synagogues, it says in Matthew, preaching the kingdom of God. Preaching the kingdom, gospel of the kingdom. Paul said there's only one gospel. But he preached the gospel of the kingdom. Which one are we preaching? You know what? Before the end comes, it's the gospel of the kingdom that got to be preached at the ends of the earth. It's time now for rebirth of the gospel of the kingdom. That's all part of what he's going to do. You know, I, I want you to know that he's going to do something very dramatic. But you know what? We're going to have to have a little reality check. One heart, one life at a time. He's looking to change us. Change, transition, transformation. That's what he's really all about on a personal basis, on an individual basis. Sometimes I go to church and I say, man, I wish Susie was here. Man, you know what? That message today, that was for Sister Susie. My cousin, you know, man, I sure wish she was here. You know what? God knew exactly who was going to be here tonight. He knew we were going to be here. He knows how hungry you are. My Bible says that God ain't going to be mocked. We're going to reap what we sell. If we sell in the flesh, we're going to reap in the flesh. Or if we sell in the spirit, we're going to reap in the spirit. So I want to be real careful what I sow. It's one of the principles of God. 
sowing and reaping that he put in in Matthew chapter 9. It's a perpetual covenant that he has with our seed. That whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. He tied it to night and day, hot and cold. He said, as long as they go on. He said, every time you see a rainbow in the sky, know that I made a covenant with you and that my eye is on your seed. Amen. Why? Because his heart is for our harvest. We need to be people who sow. Not just our finances, but everything that we are. Our creativity, our energy, our giftings, our calling, our talent. So into what God is doing. He wants to do something new and something wonderful. In the now. Lift your heart to the Lord right now. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your love. We thank you that you are the King of kings. And you're the Lord of lords. That you're the beginning and you're the end. That you're the first and the last. That you're the Alpha and the Omega. That you're the root and the offspring of David. That you're the bright morning star. That you're the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come and roar in this place. Come and roar in this province. Come and roar in our hearts. Come and have your way in us tonight. Let that anointing for revival penetrate our hearts and our spirits. Put within us a fresh new hunger. Put fresh fire in our spirit. That we would hunger and thirst after you and after your righteousness. Father, give us a heart after your own heart. That we would turn to you afresh and new tonight. That we would humble ourselves before you. That we would turn ourselves over fully and wholly to you and you alone. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in each one of our hearts and each one of our lives. Father, I declare the harvest over my brothers and sisters. Father, let them have dreams and visions and revelation knowledge. Father, let them be birthed and rebirthed in the fire of your spirit. Let not one of us leave this place tonight untouched, unchanged by your power and by your love. And now, Father, I ask that you bless them physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. Let your blessing rain down on them. Let your blessing overtake them. Bless them in their coming. They're going let all the blessings of Abraham rain down on them now. Bless them, Lord. Let your love, your mercy, and your grace, let your blessing, Father, just begin to soak into their hearts. Guide them and lead them, protect them by the power of your spirit, by the power of your love, by the power of your I just wanted to share this with uh, Pastor Tony and Sarah. I got this during worship. I feel it's just, not just for you, but for your whole church body. Um, during the worship, I saw a tree, and the leaves were changing from one color to another to another, and then they were gold. And it seemed like they were changing right before my eyes, and we were going from season to season quickly. And then I saw the church, and there was a light shining from it. But it wasn't just a normal light. It was a light that really transformed. And it wasn't just lighting the way. It was the way. And I saw people standing around, and their faces and their positions were also changing quickly. And I saw time passing, and then it seemed to stop. And I felt the breeze blow, and the wind moved in the leaves of the tree. And I heard the Lord say, you are entering a season of greater influence, expansion on all sides, when you will acknowledge me in all ways and let my spirit guide. Now I want everyone that belongs to the church to hear this word because you need to come into alignment with this word if it's ever going to come to pass. And if we want God to do what he wants to do, then we have to get in line. He's not just talking to Pastor Tony and Sarah. He's talking to everyone who gathers here. And, and fulfills the call and the vision of God together. He said, when you will listen to my voice and in obedience do your part, it will cause an overflow from my throne to your heart. There is coming new covenant understanding and the promise that lies therein. When you will stand together in unity, it will cause you to rise and win. When I got that stanza from the Lord, I felt he was saying that there's been fractions and there hasn't always been agreement. And God says that you can get into agreement. It's yeah. a choice. Yeah. You don't always have to agree, but you can get into agreement. 
Hallelujah. And it's when we get into agreement that we walk in unity and the plan and the purpose of God is fulfilled in our lives. So he said there's a greater understanding of covenant coming, which means that we stand together no matter what. Through thick or thin, together we lose or win. That we stand together, we believe and we move together. He said when you stand and believe together in your love, faith is made true. And when you will walk in love believing, there is nothing you cannot do. You will come to know what matters in my heart and mind as you press into me all the answers you will find. And you will come to realize that in the trials and the tests, I'm working on your behalf, for I desire that you be blessed. A church standing steadfast, a church on the hill, that's making a difference by walking in my power and seeking my will. A church that truly knows me and is moving in my plan is the church that causes others to possess their personal promised land. You will teach them all to realize and to understand and see that they can overcome anything when they overcome in me. I see the hearts in prayer. And I see the tears they cry. I hear them when they lift their voice, and I hear them ask me why. You see, the hands of time are moving quickly, but remember, they're moving in sync with my plan. For I hold every moment in my heart and every purpose in my hand. So don't think that the move of my spirit will tarry, though it seems you have to wait. I am getting all things ready, and I promise I won't be late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.